Hey, welcome back to the Fix the Rock channel. What we're doing today is we're going to be taking the blade layer out of this Cybertool M. And so, kind of making like a TSA approved knife. Um, I can't say that, you know, literally because the TSA agent inspecting you gets to decide himself what is actually approved and not approved. But basically what we're doing is removing the large blade, the small blade, and of course the corkscrew will have to go since they share a spring. And so what we're going to have to do, um, since removing the blade layer will leave an awkward empty gap, like here where the, the corkscrew belongs, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using these titanium scales, and if you notice they do not have a cutout on the back. Alright, so this right here will not have the cutout. And so that what that does for us is we can easily um, remove the blade layer without having this awkward gap in the back. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna begin removing everything and taking off, taking off the scales. All right, what we'll do is we're gonna carefully begin prying this scale off. And so what I do is I use a small blade and just work my way right underneath the scale. Just like that. And once I just get it slightly pried open, I'll change over to the can opener. And that works really well for getting under there. And you got a little bit more leverage behind the prying. All right, just like that. And you can look at the back, and you can see how well you did on taking off the scale. Sometimes you'll have a big chunk of plastic that'll break off. This actually came off really well. All right, then we do the same thing on the opposite side. All right, so, just right there, I can see this little mushroom, or we don't call it, came out. And so I know, I know that I've gone deep enough. All right, so, on the inside, that's what it looks like. And so no real damage to the grommet. That's so all we need to do is just kind of pluck it off. Just like that. All right, so that right there can be completely reused. Um, you'll notice there's no damage to the bottom, to the top. And so that's where I get my grommets from, for those who have asked about where I get the brass washers and all that. All right, so we can continue doing the exact same thing on the remaining three. All right, let's see if that's going to go ahead and work for us. And if it doesn't, then we'll go ahead and drill it out some more. All right, so that popped right off. That's good, just three to go. There we go, just fine. Well, that's one way to do it. All right, and just like that, we have off our first liner. All right, so I'm gonna read just the camera and we'll continue from there. All right, so the first layer, which is the layer we're gonna be getting rid of. All right, so the corkscrew. And actually, this will also not be needed with this cutout. So I'll go ahead and put this off to this side. The corkscrew we're not going to use. This we're not going to use. All right. This one's not going to come off. All right, there we go. All right, so all of those tools just removed. I'm not going to be using. All right, so what, what's happened here is, after drilling, the tips have kind of mushroomed. So we just need to bite off these tips.
Another question that I get quite often is if I use new brass pins. And then, of course, it's, yes, you know, I, I use both new pins and old pins. And so these brass pins, uh, if they're in good condition, I can actually reuse them. But I have to reuse it on a, on a significantly smaller knife. All right, this also we won't need. All right, so the remainder is what we're going to be using. Except for this top liner, we're going to have to replace with another liner. Kind of slow going here. There we go. So, like I said, we're not going to use this either. So, this is going to be the first liner, like that. All right, this will be our first layer. The scissors. Partial hook. All right, so now what we need to do is we're going to uh, clean up all these tools because like I said, they're quite greasy from being originally oiled. So I clean that up and we're going to acid etch all the tools. So I was gonna give this a nice dark color. And all right, so I've washed the tools and simply what I did is I just used some warm water and some dish soap and a toothbrush and just kind of scrubbed really well. But as you can see, uh, there's still my fingerprints, and so since your hands are oily, that's going to remain. And since we're going to be acid etching these tools, we're going to also have to degrease them. So usually what I do is I'll just use a little cotton ring here and some fingernail polish remover. It just for degreasing, getting rid of all the fingerprints and whatever else has remained. Preparing it for the acid etching. All right, you can tell it's not my specialty. <laughs> These liners. All right, so what we do is we're cutting this out, uh, cutting G10, and we're going to be shaving it to these liners right here. And so then we'll come back and we'll finish up with the tools. So here are the finished blue G10 liners. And so it's gonna basically be this one up top. Then we'll have this one come next. Between that, we'll have this one. All right, so just like that. So that's gonna be set up. All right, and so a question that I get quite often is, um, is there any advantage for the G10? I mean, well, obviously, the first advantage is the style. Um, it's going to add a, a lot of, I don't know, it's just like I said, style. You know, we have a nice titanium um, scale here. And you have this, you know, nice blue G10. You know, the, the edge will be visible. You have this peak through right here. And so it's going to look good. But other than that, also, um, an advantage that the, the G10 has over the aluminum is that whenever you bend the, the original aluminum liners, they stay bent. Okay, they don't they don't come back. All right. So, whereas the G10, you bend it, it returns back. So I mean, otherwise, weight wise, endurance wise, I mean, they both hold about the same. 
Um, I guess that'd be the, the only real, real positive is simply that the G10, it springs back into shape. So other than that, it just comes down to the style. All right, so next we're gonna do is we're going to put strings. We're gonna hang all these uh, tools from strings so we can submerge it into the acid. All right, so what we'll do is go to hang these on here. Too. All right, so just like that, I have them on a chopstick, a string, and we're just going to go ahead and submerge this into the acid. We'll give it about, um, we'll give about a minute and 30 seconds. All right, so it's been just over a minute and 30 seconds. So we're going to do, gonna pull this out. So you guys can see. All right, so the tools have already darkened. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go rinse this off real quick and scrub it a little bit with a toothbrush and then come back for a second round. Okay, so this is after the first first time in the acid. As you see it's kind of kind of blotchy here and there. It's kind of normal for the acid, the first run. And so what we'll do is go ahead and we'll stick it in for another minute and 30 seconds. And do it all over and see how it looks then. All right, and so, so it looks like after two times in the acid. And so where it's wet, it looks darker, but now it's but now it's nice and basically kind of uniform in color. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing with the rest of the tools. Repeat the exact same process with them. All right, so we finished the acid etching. You see, that's how it looks before doing any of the, the brass washing. And also, it's quite obvious that the uh, the bit driver is gonna be a bit darker. Just different ways the metal reacts to the acid. All right, so like I said, next we're gonna do is we have some brass here, and we're just gonna grab. We'll start probably with this right here, and just toss it. In here, close this up. Shake this up. All right, so you can see the brass has left marks on the acid etching. Just got a little gold flakes there. All right, then we're gonna do this with the rest of the tools, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks. So this is how they turned out. See what all we have here in plan. Let's grab the titanium, lock the scale. Then our last layer, let's go over here. So, here are the brass rods we're going to be using. Now, these are actually brass rods, uh, brass pins that I have removed from a different knife. And so, that's why the pinning, I didn't show any, any of that work because it's the original pins. Um, whereas this one I just cut um, because you'll see here in a second, this one actually goes inside of the scale. All right, so if you don't have pins uh, long enough, that you have uh, scavenged basically from a different knife. The way you have to do is you'd order um, basically some brass rods, kind of like these. And I'll include a link to everything I've used here uh, in, in the description of the video. And what you do is you would just cut the size you need and uh, you would you would peen the top so that it's shaped about like this. That way it fits into the scale just right. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll start assembly. And so once again, in this build, we're not going to need the, the brass washers, grommets, whatever you want to call them, because all the peening work will be done externally. So these are just going to slide right in there, just like that. 
Now, actually, these scales, they are they're meant to have a torque screw, but since we're doing such a large knife, we don't have a torque screw long enough. And so actually, this turns out really fancy looking with the peening work being visible. All right, and so like I said, for the fourth pin, it basically just fits right inside like that. All right, so it won't be visible on the outside once we're finished. I think we'll just take the first G10 liner, slide it on. All right, just like that. All right, what I'm going to do is make sure that I push all of these pins in. That way later on, don't cause trouble. We will probably do this a couple times while assembling, just making sure that all the pins are nice and snug. All right, and this one now fell out. It's okay, that just slides right back in there. Just like that. Okay, we can begin the next layer. We're going to push this pin over just a bit. Go. Good. I just need to push this down now. All right, excellent. All right, then we're gonna continue with this. We'll do this outside, we'll do some peening work. All right, so here you're all finished up. And so we'll go ahead and we'll slide this top scale back on. All right, and you should see there's just a little bit of brass and each one starts to be peening. All right, so what we're gonna do next is do some masking tape. And this will, this will protect the titanium while we are peening. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna be peening it and I need to do a bit of a setup here. I need a third, set of, third pair of hands here. And so, get this all set up and we'll continue with the peening. My lovely wife is going to be assisting me. All right, so again, this looks like it's just fine. Issues here. All right, we'll go, go ahead and stop right there, and I'll do the other two. Again, we'll do this off camera. And I'll come back, I'll show you how it turned out in the end. All right, we're back inside. We finished up the painting. That's how it looks. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll check the tool set one more time, just to make sure everything snaps open and closed. And actually, this is before I've even added any oil. So we'll oil this and it'll actually be even snap here.
right, so that's really good. Everything's nice and tight. Still snaps. So all we have left to do is, like I said, I'll oil that. But also, we're gonna go ahead and we'll add some of these accessories here. It's the wrong color. Blue pick, got a blue um, set of tweezers there. And we've also acid etched the key ring. So it'll match the rest of the tools. All right, so there we go. And our knife is complete. So let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about how it turned out, the whole process, the tool set. Let me know what you think. Will TSA let this go? Or will they will they not let it because of the, the scissors? I think that's the only thing that possibly they could really complain about is the scissors, scissors on it. I am but there we go. Bladeless cyber tool. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.